there. Uh, just to say, all the materials for this talk, all the code, the slides and so on, uh, are available from the repo at the top there. Okay, so I know there are uh, a few network issues today, but uh, if you want to take a note of that, yeah, or uh, we're also tweeting it out, you know, so uh, if you look me up on Twitter, I tweeted out, the conference tweeted it out as well, so it's, uh, it's generally available. Okay, but uh, uh, of course, any issues, let me know. So a uh, little bit about myself, uh, I've been a full-time trainer for almost 20 years now. <laughs> um, uh, out of curiosity, who's been in one of my courses? Quick show of hands. Oh, that makes me proud, thank you, okay? Uh, for everybody else, I'm really bitterly disappointed, okay? Why, uh, why haven't you been in one of my courses yet? Explain yourselves, you know? Uh, so I've been doing this for 20 years, delivered over a thousand courses and so on. Um, I'm the head of learning at Instill, so uh, Instill are a software company, uh, we do training, we do coaching, we do mentoring and we do software development. Software development is actually about 90% of the business. You know, we're mostly a software company, uh, but because the trainers bounce around so much, yeah, uh, that's what we're best known for. Yeah. And uh, I, I do other things as well. Yeah. So uh, what this course is about, yeah, is uh, it's about programming in Kotlin with Arrow, okay? So Arrow is a set of extensions for Kotlin, uh, a set of extensions for doing functional programming, and it's getting an awful lot of interest at the moment, okay? So the best way to introduce Arrow is to just j uh, dump a huge bucket of code over your heads, okay? So that's what I'm going to do, <laughs> okay? So uh, uh, take it from me, it all compiles, it all runs, yeah? If you don't believe me, download the project and have a play, you know? Uh, uh, that's what it's there for. Okay, so uh, what's in Arrow? You know, so first of all, getting ahead of myself, we'll introduce Kotlin, we'll introduce Arrow, and then uh, these are three different dimensions of what Arrow is that we'll get into. Okay, we'll probably only have time to do the, the data types. Okay, we only have half an hour. Yeah, but uh, hopefully you'll be interested enough to go on and uh, have a play with the rest. Okay, so uh, quick show of hands, who's actually programming in Kotlin at the minute? or has programmed with Kotlin already. Uh, excellent, few people, good, good, good. Uh, for everybody else, let me just do uh, a quick introduction. Uh, so let's say we want to write a program, okay? Always a good idea, we're coders, yeah? And uh, we want to write a program and it's gonna take in a bunch of numbers and then three X's and then print the, print the total of the numbers, okay? So if we put in some illegal input like Wibble, uh, it should just say it's ignoring that. If we just put in three X's and nothing else, it should return zero, okay? So. Uh, Here's how we could do it in Java, uh, classic Java, not trying to do anything fancy, but trying to show all the programming styles in Java. So we could have a good old scanner, uh, we could have an array list of integers, uh, we could create a pattern object to represent the regular expression, and then we could go into a loop uh, with the, the, the while there, scanner has next line, and then there are three cases that we need to worry about. Yeah. So if we've reached the end, if the input matches our pattern, the three X's, uh, then we're going, going to go away and break out. Uh, if it's an integer, then we'll read it in as an int and uh, we'll add it to the list of numbers. Otherwise, we'll take whatever the hell the user typed and say we don't give a damn about it. Okay? And then uh, at the end, uh, we want to add up all the numbers and uh, this being Java 8, uh, we'll use the streams API to do it. A couple of different ways we could have done it. Uh, I'll do it with a reduction. Yeah? And then uh, we'll print out the total of all the numbers. Okay? So that's our Java solution. Uh, here's the corresponding Kotlin solution. Okay, same code rewritten in Kotlin. Yeah. So, uh, wh what are the points to note? Okay. So, if I had more time, I'd try and get you guys to work out what they are and so on. Uh, as it is, I've just listed them on the right-hand side. Okay. So, in Kotlin, yeah, you can have functions outside of classes. Okay. You can have, uh, whoops, uh, you can have free functions. Yeah, as uh, some people call them. You don't have to put in semicolons, yay. Uh, yeah, we have type inference, yay. We no longer need to hide ourselves in shame from the C-sharp developers, okay? So, uh, so yeah, that they got it in 2008, you know, but uh, we have it now, and of course it's in Java 10 as well. Uh, so uh, we've got type inference, uh, both val and var. So if you declare something with val instead of var, then it's in Java terms, anybody know? Yes, it's, it's final, yeah, in, in Java terms, yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, you have helper functions, yeah. So uh, you see there we've got like helper functions to build collections. Uh, print line just works. We don't have to say system out print line, all that kind of thing. Uh, we can do string interpolation. We can say dollar variable name inside a string. So dollar foo will work, yeah. If you want to say dollar foo dot bar dot z, uh, you have to put braces around it. Uh, collections have been greatly simplified. Uh, as part of that, you know, the functional programming works better. You don't have this horrible stream abstraction, uh, all that kind of stuff. And there's perfect interoperability, okay? So the interoperability works exceptionally well, okay? So here, obviously, we're calling into Java types, and that works great, yeah? Uh, if you want to call in uh, to Kotlin from Java, yeah, then there are a few extra rules to remember. Like, for example, let's say we declare a standalone function called foo inside a file called bar. Well, the Kotlin compiler will create bar as a class, you know, so bar will be the class containing a static method called foo, and uh, that's how you would call it if you were calling it from Java and so on. Yeah, but everybody get the idea? Yeah, so it's just nicer, <laughs> okay, you know, so uh, Kotlin is just a nicer way to write code in the JVM, okay, and uh, there aren't any real sharp edges, there aren't any pain points, you know, uh, there's nothing that's going to give you a huge amount of pain uh, if you're transitioning over from Java, you know, so it's, it's just very, very nice, yeah. Uh, so that's Kotlin. Uh, what's Arrow and why do we care? Yeah. Well, uh, if you take that list of language features, that's pretty much the list of language features that all the new languages uh, offer. Okay. And uh, any programming languages that don't offer that set of features, yeah, well, they're moving towards offering them now. Okay. So uh, I try to explain this using Star Trek. <laughs> okay. So Scala is like uh, Sarek, you know, so uh, uh, they were there first, you know, they introduced most of this stuff. Yeah. And then coming off that, you've got Kotlin and Swift, yeah, and uh, Kotlin and Swift are incredibly similar to one another, you know, uh, one is the evil twin of the other, you know, and, uh, you know, so Java's playing catch up, you know, so Java's trying to incrementally add all of these features, you know, to, uh, to play in the same space, yeah, and then, uh, of course, you could do all of this in JavaScript, uh, uh, ideally with something like TypeScript, you know, but would you really want to? No. You know, so uh, so this is where we are. Okay, so yes, it looks like there are an awful lot of new languages. Yeah, and there are. Yeah, but they're all converging on the same point. Okay. Uh, but there is a big argument, okay? And the big argument is how much functional programming is enough functional programming, okay? So as you know, uh, the power of Scala and the great weakness of Scala is that it tries to give you the full OO programming toolkit, yeah, and the full functional programming toolkit at the same time, okay? Yeah, and uh, that inevitably leads to complexity, you know? And is that good or is that bad, okay? So you can incrementally get into Scala, yeah, and uh, you can start at the shallow end and walk towards the deep end, you know. But whenever people learn Scala, there's always the danger they kind of trip over and fall too far forwards and, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, uh, people who are educating themselves in Scala can have a negative experience, yeah. And uh, that's simply because there is so much in the language, okay. Whereas Kotlin uh, takes a more pragmatic approach and say, mm, okay, uh, we're going to give you the OO toolkit, you know, and uh, we're going to give you the bits of functional programming. Uh, that you know the, the Android developer of today, the enterprise developer of today, you know needs. Okay, so uh, you know, do, do you want to be brave, you know, and uh, go out and embrace all of functional programming, yeah, or uh, do, do you want to just use the, the most pragmatic toolkit for today? Okay, and uh, it's not like there's a right or a wrong answer. <laughs> okay, that's just what people are arguing about at the minute. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can kind of think about it like the three bears, you know, we've got uh, too hot, too cold and just right, you know. Uh, anybody remember this from The Simpsons? Anybody know what Bart's answer to this is? Any Simpsons fans amongst us? No, so, uh, so what he does is he just says, well, this doesn't take a genius, you know, and uh, he pours some of the too cold into the too hot, <laughs> okay? So uh, that's basically what you're doing, yeah, uh, whenever you're working with Aru, okay? So uh, Aru is a functional programming library for Kotlin developers who think Kotlin is the best choice for their project, yeah, who are very happy with the Kotlin language, but they want a little bit more functional, <laughs> okay? You know, they want a little bit of chocolate in their peanut butter, <laughs> okay? So, uh, so what Aru does is it takes the Kotlin language and it adds in some extra functional uh, programming components. 
okay? And uh, the main one that people latch on to, it might not be the most important one, but the main one that people latch on to is support for, well, you tell me, what's the official scary thing in functional programming, okay? So if you were a C programmer, pointer arithmetic, official scary thing, okay? If you're an OO programmer, polymorphism, official scary thing. What's the official scary thing in functional programming? Starts with M. Monads! Yay! Monads are the scary thing. Okay? So, uh, with, uh, with Arrow, yeah, you can do monads and monadic composition in Kotlin and so on. And we'll see some demos of this as we go along. So, Arrow came around in January when uh, there were two leading libraries for doing this kind of thing in the Kotlin environment and they joined forces. Okay? Because they didn't want the situation that exists in Scala, where even in Scala you have like libraries for doing more advanced functional programming, yeah, but there's a debate over which one uh, you should be using. So, they wanted to be uh, one clear alternative. Okay? It's not a formal part of Kotlin. It's not a formal part of the, the Kotlin language, yeah, but there's an awful lot of interest around it at the minute, you know, and it's here to stay. You know, it's here to stay in the medium to long term, uh, given the number of people who are playing with it and talking about it and so on, okay? Uh, it's still very much an evolving technology, and I'm still very much learning it, <laughs> okay? So this is not some kind of master class or expert tutorial or anything like that. Uh, this is just uh, a result of my progress so far, okay? So, first thing that we want to do uh, is get you familiar with some of the different data types, okay? And uh, the way that we're going to do that is by doing the same thing many times, okay? Who knows the comedian uh, Rich Hall, I think his name is? Yeah, and he's got the, the joke about Tom Cruise, yeah? So whenever Tom Cruise does a movie, it's the same movie, okay? So there's the movie where he's a cocktail maker. Pretty good cocktail maker, but he's a crisis of confidence, and then a woman helps him through it, you know? Uh, and then he's a race car driver. Pretty good race car driver, but then he's a crisis of confidence and a woman helps him through it, you know? And then he's a fighter pilot, pretty good fighter pilot, but he's a crisis of confidence and a woman helps him through it, you know? And then he's a sports agent, you get the idea, <laughs> okay? So, uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take the Kotlin data types, yeah? And with brick-like subtlety, we're going to do the same thing time after time, yeah? Uh, and hopefully that'll uh, drill in the idea, okay? So the Kotlin language already has very good handling for null values, okay? This is one of its strengths, okay? But let's forget about that for the minute, okay? So let's think about the option type, which you have in Scala and to an extent in Java 8 and so on. You know, what is option, okay? Well, you can think of option as being an abstract base class, yeah? And coming off that, you've got sum and none, okay? So a sum is a set of one, a none is a set of zero, okay? So here's a classic example you see at the top there. Let's say we want to call good old system get property, okay? So if I say system get property uh, Java dot version, you know, it'll say like 8 dot something or 9 dot something or whatever, okay? But if I say system get property wibble, yeah, I'm going to get back null, okay? So one way we can handle that is by saying, okay, if the result was null, then return a sum of result, otherwise return a none, okay? So you see there it's declared as returning an option of string, okay? So an option is just a set of either one member or zero members, okay? So you see there I've written it two ways, okay? So the, the top way is good for learning, the bottom way is how you'd actually do it. Yeah. And then having done that, I can pattern match. So you see there I can say when and I can handle the two cases. Yeah. Or I can say get or else. Okay. So uh, if it's a sum, we'll get the value in it. Otherwise, we'll get that default value. Or yet another way, yeah, is that I could fold over it, yeah. So you see there I say input.fold and I'm passing in two code blocks, okay, two blocks of code to be executed, yeah. So uh, the, the first one is the one to be executed if it's a none, the second one is the one to be executed if there's something there, okay, yeah. So the way to remember how fold works and a bunch of other things as well is that right is right, <laughs> okay. So that the case in the right is the one that you execute when the thing works or works best, okay. Okay? And uh, left is wrong, left is sinister. Okay, so uh, any lefties amongst us? Oh, okay. Yeah. Do, do, don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's okay. You know, you're forgiven. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, another way that we could do it, yeah, is uh, we could go through uh, a flat map. Yeah, so let's say we've got two options. Yeah, and uh, we only want to proceed in the case where the first option is a sum, okay? So uh, we either want to get back nothing from this, yeah, or the two sums, you know, the, if the, uh, the two options succeeded. So uh, you could try all of those, that's what this code does, and it produces those results, okay? 
But let's try a slightly harder problem, okay? So uh, let's say we've got a postcode, yeah? And you see there, the postcode type takes an input string question mark, okay? So the question mark means this might be null, okay? And the Kotlin compiler will force us to handle this, okay? So we'll have a postcode type, yeah? And uh, that postcode type, um, uh, we'll have a method called value, yeah, and that will return an option, yeah, of the value of the postcode, you know, that, that string, whatever it was. And then we'll have an address, and the address may or may not have a postcode, and it'll have a method called location, and that will return an option of the postcode, because it might not be there, you know. And then we'll have a person, and the person may or may not have an address, so we'll have a residence method that returns an option of the address, okay. So the point is, yeah, I can write a method called print postcode and it can use the option like that, okay? So we can say, okay, uh, we're going to start out and we're going to go to the person and try and extract the residence, yeah? And uh, so that will give us the address. And then on the address, we'll call location. That will give us the location of uh, the postcode. And from that, we'll try and get the, uh, the value of the postcode, okay? Yep. So uh, we can do that. We can write a little method like that. We should say we're folding over it again for the two results. And then we can try it out and it'll work. Okay. So this bit here, yeah, the calls to bind, okay, that's the monad. Okay. That's the monad, uh, monadic composition. Okay. The, the clue is in the option dot monad. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're now doing monadic composition in Kotlin. Okay. We can feel proud. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're being fully functional. Yeah. Uh, so that's Cocktail, okay? So uh, let's move on to uh, a different movie. Let's move on to Days of Thunder or whatever, yeah? So we've got this base class called Try, yeah? And just like Option, we've got two possibilities, okay? Success and failure, okay? So uh, success holds a successful result, failure holds the exception, okay? So if you like your functional programming, yeah, uh, you're not going to use exceptions, uh, you're going to use the try monad, okay? So uh, we've got a function here, first line, and what it does is it reads the first line from a file, okay? So you pass in a file path and it'll try and read the first line of it, okay? But if you look at the last line there, we're saying try read first line path, okay? So this function is either going to return a uh, success uh, or a failure. And then notice, I can do exactly the same things as before, okay? So I can do pattern matching. I can use the when, okay? I can fold over it, you know? Uh, I can say map, okay? And the map will only be done in the case of a success, okay? If I want to do something in the case of a failure, uh, I can say recover, okay? And then uh, we can have a little bit of fun. So let's say we know that we've got a file, and the first line in the file is the name of another file, and the first line in that file is the name of another file, you know, and so on, okay, uh, until we get our final result, okay? So how could we do that? Well, we could do that with lots of nested flat maps and maps, okay? So uh, that would work just well, uh, quite well, yeah? But uh, I think you would agree it doesn't look particularly nice, okay? But we could try it, you know, we could try all the things I've just shown you, and they would work, okay? But ain't that nicer, <laughs> okay? So uh, this is how we'd use our monadic composition here. So we'd say, okay, read the first line of the first file, uh, and that'll return one, yeah? And then go to that file and read its first line and that will give you two and you know uh, keep going yeah until we get to the end okay so what we're going to get back is a try yeah it'll either be a success or a failure and we can use a fold to handle the two cases everybody okay with that yeah so you see it's the same trick <laughs> okay uh, we're doing the same trick over and over again okay uh, but this time he's a fighter pilot, pretty good fighter pilot, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so let's do either, okay? So uh, either is where you've got two options, yeah, right and left, okay? And unlike try, neither is wrong, okay? It's just that the right option is the better option, if you see what I mean, okay? And uh, I've got a little demo here of using it, where we're going to say that even numbers are right, you know, and odd numbers are wrong, okay? But to, to save a little bit of time, take it from me, it works works the same, okay? And uh, now is a good time to pause and say all of these types that we've been looking at so far, yeah, they're slowly being adopted and slowly being used, okay? So a good example would be Kotlin test, okay? So a Kotlin test is kind of the Kotlin equivalent of JUnit, you know? So in Kotlin test, they very recently added like a sub-project, yeah? And that adds matchers for all the Kotlin types, okay? So in the case of either, you've got a right and a left, yeah? And you see there, we've now got matchers for should be right 
right and should be left and so on. Okay, so there are now matchers in Kotlin test uh, for all the standard arrow types. That makes sense, okay? Cool. Right. So let's just do Jerry Maguire, yeah, and then we'll try and plug it all together. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is going to be validated, which is a little bit more complicated. Okay. So so uh, let's do a, a little bit of a more in-depth example. So. Let's say we want to add the user, ask the user a bunch of questions, yeah, and if they've answered all the questions right, create an employee object, okay? So we'll ask for the ID, we'll ask for the age, we'll ask for where they work, their department basically, yeah? But uh, the ID has to follow a pattern, the age has to be in a range, uh, the department has to be from an enum, okay? So uh, if they pass in invalid data, yeah, then uh, we want to print out what the errors were, okay? So you can guess what's coming. There's a base class validated, and coming off that, we've got valid and invalid. Okay, so valid will hold the result, invalid will hold the uh, the error message. So. I can write a bunch of functions here, like check ID, check age, check department, and so on, and they're going to return a, uh, a validated, okay? So uh, each of these is going to be valid or invalid, okay? And then you see what I can do is I can call my functions, yeah? And in this case, we don't use monadic composition, we use what's called an applicative, okay? But the effect is pretty much the same, okay? So you see there I'm saying map, ID, age, department, and so on. So if all of these were valid, yeah, then we will create the employee and this right hand uh, lambda code block, whatever you want to call it, uh, within the fold will get executed, yeah? Otherwise, the one on the left will get executed. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, so that's a, that's how we could do it within our room. Yeah, uh, and then to final finish off. Yeah, because uh, time's getting short. Uh, you can start using these in combination. Okay, so in the example that we just did. There was a bug. <laughs> okay, so let's say uh, we ask the user what their age is. Yeah, and we say, well, my age is Wibble. <laughs> okay, well then we're going to get a, a number format exception. And uh, why did we do that? Yeah, well, because here uh, we said, ask question, how old are you? And that returned the string. And I've just, of course, we just called to int, you know, uh, on the string. Okay, so we were half right in that we needed a validated. Okay, but anybody who's done this before, tell me what we actually should have used. We should have used a validated, but with a. <coughs> Don't leave me hanging. T. Try, yes, well, thank you, yeah. So uh, what we actually need, yeah, is uh, we need a try uh, of validated, okay? So uh, these data structures become more powerful, yeah, uh, once you start stacking them on top of one another, okay? So uh, what we want to do is we want to start combining these things. So uh, we can take our sample functions here, yeah, and uh, instead of returning just a validated, yeah, they're going to return a, a, a try of validated, okay? And that's not hard work, you know. Uh, all I need to do is, uh, you see the one at the top there, I just need to take the, the final line of code that it was returning and just put a try around that, you know, and now we're all good, okay? So uh, I want all my functions that ask questions to have the same signature, okay? So uh, in some cases, an exception uh, just isn't going to be possible, yeah, but in most of them it is. So you see the one there at the bottom, we're trying to convert to an int. Uh, just to make the demo a little bit more interesting, I added an extra function. Let's say we're going to try and ask for the salary as well. So we're going to need to take some input, a string, and convert it to a double, okay? So now that we've got these functions, yeah, uh, we'll extend our employee type a little bit just to make it easier for Arrow to create it. So you see there I'm saying there's a constructor of employee uh, that takes a tuple four. So basically you can create an employee from a, a tuple of four values. That's just to make it easier for Arrow to create it. And then up the top there, we'll have three very simple functions, one for each case that might occur. Okay, so what are the three cases? Well, uh, we might have success. Yay! You know, we might be able to create an employee. Okay, or an exception might have been through. Woo. Yeah. Or uh, the user might have typed in some invalid data. Okay. So uh, here's the, the situation here. So uh, we're going to end up with a try of validated. Okay. So that try will be either a success or a failure. Okay. If it's a failure, then we want to call exception. Okay. Uh, if it's a success, well, then we want to unpack the validated. Okay. We want to have a look at the validated. Okay. So the validated is either going to be valid or invalid. Okay. So uh, in the case where it's valid, 
we want to call our success function. In the case where it's invalid, we want to call our invalid function. That makes sense? Yeah. So, sounds like an awful lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the, this is what you can get it down to here. Okay. So, uh, we're going to do our, our monadic composition. Okay. So, we're going to go out and call all our functions. Yeah. And just put bind at the end and we'll get the results. Yeah. And then, uh, assuming everything works, we'll use this applicative thingy and uh, we'll use that to try and create the employee object. Okay. And then uh, we can do a double fold. So, if you look at the code at the bottom there, uh, we're saying dot fold yeah and remember this is against a try of validated yeah so uh, in the error case yeah that first lambda slash code block will get executed and uh, we want to call our exception function and pass in the error that was raised yeah but if uh, if it was a success well it still might be valid or invalid okay so we want to do another fold <laughs> okay and uh, the uh, the invalid function, yeah, will be called if there were one or more errors, okay? Uh, the success function, yeah, will get called if everything works, okay? And uh, here it is here, you know, so uh, if you download uh, the code and actually put it into IntelliJ and run it and so on, uh, you'll see that I'm not lying, <laughs> okay? So uh, it does actually do what it says on the tin. Uh, everybody okay with that? That makes sense, okay? Grand, cool. So, uh, those aren't all the types, okay? Those are just the basic types, okay? Those are the types that are familiar enough to what you already do in Java that you can immediately make sense of them, okay? There are a shed load of other types, yeah, uh, that do lots more interesting things, yeah, but you move into them incrementally, okay? So those of you who have done this before, you'll know that whenever you start into functional programming, you start off with option, that's the easiest one to understand, you know, and uh, then you move into try, yeah, and, uh, and so on and so on. So you incrementally work your way in, okay? So if you can understand those, you'll be able to understand all the others as well. It'll just take a bit more effort, you know? So just uh, take my project as a basis or just download the library and uh, you can go and have a play, okay? Uh, so what is there besides that? Lots of other stuff that we don't have time to get into, <laughs> okay? Uh, you have the ability to partially invoke functions. Oh, what the hell, we'll do this one. Uh, so you see here, uh, we've got a lambda that says add numbers, and we take in two numbers and return them added. Wow, okay? But what I can do is I can partially invoke that, okay? So you see there, if I say add nums partially to seven, well, that'll return a new lambda, which is the same as add nums, but with the second argument replaced with seven, okay? So add seven now refers to a lambda that takes a single input yeah and will add whatever that input is to seven okay so uh, this is what's known in functional programming as partial invocation that's like the hello world of partial invocation okay so there's support for partial invocation yeah uh, there's support for a closely related concept called currying, yeah? Uh, there's support for that built in, yeah? There's support for taking arbitrary functions and composing them together, yeah? And then there's support for weird stuff, <laughs> okay? So, uh, you know, so, so these things that we've been talking about, partial invocation, currying, monadic composition, you know, uh, these are like standard semi-advanced functional things, but there are more advanced functional things, okay? And uh, what one one of these is lenses, which we don't have time to get into, but just to say lenses is like a, a really advanced functional programming thing, okay? But uh, if you take uh, a, a standard Kotlin class and add the annotation optics, yeah, uh, makes sense, we're doing lenses, yeah, then uh, you can use that advanced functional programming feature with it, okay? So, uh, Hopefully that gives you a feeling, you know, for what's in Arrow. Again, the, the main point is that Kotlin is great, okay? Kotlin gives you everything that you need right now, okay? But if you're looking at Kotlin and you've kind of got a semi-envious eye on Scala and going, yeah, but it'd be really nice to try all of that stuff out, you know? Well, then uh, that's what Arrow is for, okay? And uh, it's really easy to download to start using, yeah? Uh, the documentation is still a work in progress, but they've got some really good videos, okay? So for all those data types, I recommend yeah, uh, you can find uh, a YouTube video from the Arrow team that uh, explains in really clear language what it is and how it works. That makes sense? Yay, cool. So uh, a large man is coming down to tell me I'm out of time, so we'll finish it there. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please find me at lunch. Okay, cheers.